increasing evidence that hysteroscopy and other uterine procedures such as global endometrial ablation can safely be performed in the office setting, providing women with easier access to these procedures and quicker recovery without sacrificing pain management. Paracervical block and intracervical block are two methods that have been shown to be effective in providing women with adequate local anesthesia for these procedures. There are several protocols and techniques that have been described to obtain a level of pain control acceptable for performing endometrial ablation, and it is important that you choose the technique that's best for you and your patient. I will describe one approach that you may consider incorporating into your practice. Prepare your exam or procedure room for performing these in-office procedures and train your staff accordingly. Be aware of state and local regulations for in-office procedures regarding certification and required resuscitation equipment. Choose your patients for in-office procedures carefully and limit patients with an ASA classification of two or less. Even with level one procedures which avoid significant sedation, the physician should be prepared to deal with unexpected emergencies and have an emergency transfer protocol established. Many physicians consider that at least one person who is either monitoring the patient or performing the procedure is ACLS certified. In our office, we have emergency equipment on hand including an oxygen supply with airway, a pulse oximeter, IV access if needed, and either a defibrillator or an AED. On hand, we keep the medications for treating basic emergencies including epinephrine, atropine or robinol, Benadryl, antiemetics, and other suggested medications for resuscitation purposes. Our procedural equipment is kept in fine order. The hysteroscope is a 5.5 millimeter rigid scope. We have appropriate size dilators for dilatation. Preoperative treatment with mesoprostol administered between 100 and 200 micrograms placed either orally, buccally, or intravaginally. 24 to 48 hours prior to the procedure will significantly add to the ease of dilatation and the ability to place the paracervical block. There are several protocols that describe the type of anesthetic agents to use and the locations to inject them. Understanding the blood supply and the innervation of the uterus and cervix can help in planning where to safely inject the medications to achieve the best results. The parametrial nerves enter the uterus through the cardinal ligaments at 3 and 9 o'clock. The uterosacral nerves enter the posterior cervix and uterus via the uterosacral ligaments near the 5 and 7 o'clock positions. We use 1% lidocaine plane and 0.2% ropifocaine plane in a 50-50 ratio and plan to use approximately 25 to 30 cc's of this mixture. Many physicians use a 12 cc syringe and a 22 gauge needle on a needle extender. Others may feel more comfortable with a 22 gauge spinal needle. Sterilize the cervix with betadine. Lighting is essential for proper visualization. Assistants should be talking with the patient and offering support. Initially apply one to two cc's of the local into the anterior lip of the cervix at the 12 o'clock position. Then place a single tooth tenaculum. At five, at 7 o'clock on the cervical vaginal junction, at the insertion of the uterosacral ligaments into the posterior cervix, place the needle one centimeter deep into the tissue and aspirate to rule out any inadvertent vascular injury. Inject up to approximately 7 cc's in each site. Aspirate at the end of each injection to again confirm proper placement. Next, at the 3 and 9 o'clock positions, along the cervical vaginal junction, follow the same injection and aspiration procedures and inject approximately five cc's each. During this time, you should be monitoring the patient's blood pressure, the O2 saturation, and offering the patient verbal reassurance. There is good evidence that the time for infiltration of the nerves leading to an effective block can take between 10 and 15 minutes. Remove the speculum, place the patient's legs out of the stirrups, and allow the patient to relax for approximately 15 minutes before proceeding with the dilatation, hysteroscopy, and ablation.